Hi everyone, let's go over my micro bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with this structure over here, where in the live stream yesterday we were looking at the dotted line, right? For another move to the upside locally, take the double top, for then a move to the downside to the blue target box, also take the liquidity of a double bottom, for then a continuation to the upside. Now, in this scenario, the dotted line is unchanged. You can see we made a high, made a low, and are now, at least for a little bit, moving towards the upside hitting the blue target box as well grabbing the liquidity from the double bottom that we had for then a bit of a push now what is also important is that in the screenshot of my live stream yesterday as you can see but also at the moment i don't have any count on my chart at least in this particular folder because i do have counts now but i'll show them in a second but yesterday I didn't show a particular count on this range. The main reason being that you can also use your Elliott Wave knowledge to read price action without necessarily knowing exactly what is going on on the lower time frames. Because this over here is an expanding structure. Now you don't have to know exactly what's going on inside this expanding structure, but the fact that it is expanding is lowering the probabilities of this being a five wave move because a five wave move and then being an expanding diagonal is very very rare so the probabilities are not on the side for this to be a five wave move to the upside instead the probabilities are higher this is a three wave move to the upside and we don't have to know what kind of three wave move per se but at least the probabilities are higher for a three now if this was a three wave structure and it was finished we then expect continuation to the downside in a wave one two three four five and eventually lower prices to continue the trend that we then have however price move back towards the upside over here friday night and that invalidated and continuation to the downside in an impulsive structure so because we now have a three wave over here we can then expect the range to continue therefore as mentioned on the live stream we are then thinking about this being a potential w followed by an x and then either a flat a b c in a wave y or this is the wave w we get another wave x and then a w x y inside wave x for then continuation to the upside so that's why we were looking for another low in both of these scenarios either wave y to the upside here in a flat or we want to see a three wave X for then continuation to the upside. And if we then take the count on the chart or we put the count on the chart, then this is what I have for the more bearish scenario, because eventually we expect after a Y a move towards the downside. In this scenario, the move to the upside is labeled then as a wave W, followed by a wave X that I have in the middle, because you can have either X over here or over here. It doesn't really matter for the result, because we expect a bit of a move to the upside. If you have this as a W, a zigzag in a wave X, which is common also for a wave X, and you use uh, put wave X here on the left side, then what happens is that then we were looking for a flat in Y. So you'd have a three wave, a three wave, taking the low over here of wave X for then a five wave move to the upside. Now, if we look at this flat scenario and we take a fib from the low of A to the high of A, right? Because we want to know the low of B. So we take this fib and put it on the expanding flat wave B targets then you can see the 105 has been hit, which is a minimum target for an expanding flat wave B and then an A, B, and now you're going to be looking for a C towards the upside. The 105 is a rare target, but it is a target nonetheless. And also because it is a rare target, one could potentially argue, hey, wave X can be finished over here and then a more complex structure, W, X, Y sideways structure in a wave X for then now a three wave structure in a wave Y towards the upside. So both are still possible. That's why I have X in the middle. And if we look at the target area, for a wave Y, then it's between the 0 0.618 and the 1.236, which is sitting between 29.6K and 30.1K. You can see that over here we have a double top at 29.5K, high number one, high number two, and actually it just became a triple top because we have high number three as well. So we actually have a triple top now here more locally. And if we look towards the upside, the 1.236 has very nice confluence with this blue target area over here which is sitting between 30k and 30.1k which is indeed very very interesting 
in the more bullish scenario we have to count this as the low and we are then going to be looking for this to be a wave one now i already explained this is an expanding structure which automatically means that the probabilities for this scenario is lower but nonetheless we have to keep it in mind so in this scenario we are then looking for a wave one which has to be a five wave structure and then an expanding diagonal followed by a complex wave two and then a wxy taking the double bottom over here that we had for then a move towards the upside if we take a fib from the low to the high of wave one and we put it on some of the targets of a wave two then you can see that the golden pocket has been very nicely respected and the 786 has been hit as well these are common targets for a wave two as well as a wave x by the way but common targets for a wave two so this then works and then you expect a wave three towards the upside and as we know a wave three is a high impulsive high volume uh, move most parabolic of an impulsive structure so that means if this is the low and it kind of has to be because if we take this low i do expect lower prices then you want to see volume kicking in and impulsivity kicking in as well because now you're going to be looking for a big wave three towards the upside of course a wave three goes in waves as well but that is at least what you want to see now what is important is that we are ranging below resistance so at the moment you can see we have a big support resistance flip over here support for a while now turning into resistance if price can manage to go above this area we then have the value area low to cope with over here at 29.9k but if we can enter this value area then the point of control is the next target and then the value area high is the next target and if we look at my blue target boxes over here then you can see that the target box for a potential wave wise kind of like in between the point of control the value area low and between the point of control and the value area high we have another target box sitting between 30.4k and 30.6k what's interesting about that one is that we have a triple top here as well so there must be some liquidity resting above now if price manages to go above this target box the next one to the upside is sitting between 31.1k uh, and 31.3k if we look at the CVD divergences more locally, then we have a couple of divergences. So first of all, we had a bearish CVD divergences over here where the target was this low. Now this was a second CVD divergence as I like to call it because this was the first one with this particular high. So this high and this high, uh, lower high was the first CVD divergence, lower high on price, but a higher high on the CVD where the target was this low now that played out then price retraced to the upside creating another divergence with the same high which i then call a second divergence each time you get a divergence with the same pivot the probabilities of it playing out are lower but of course there are still probabilities so here we then have again lower high on price higher high on cvd i'll show you in a second on the aggr chart the cvd chart for then the target being this low which has been taken as well very nice indeed it also matched with the elliott wave scenario we had for a move to the downside and now price moved to the upside and we now created a third cvd divergence with that particular high so it's the same pivot now in this uh, scenario of course it can play out it is a third one and I, as i just mentioned the probabilities become lower and lower the more often you get a cvd divergence with the exact same pivot and also more locally over here we do start to see a little bit of bullish cvd divergence with a little bit of the range over here before the final push to the upside we can see a higher low in price and a lower low on the cvd so if we go to the CVD chart to show you what I just explained, then over here, lower high on price, higher high on yellow, bearish CVD divergence played out. Price moving to the upside, lower high on price, higher high on the CVD, and it played out. And now for the third time, you can see the yellow line here as well, as well as blue, lower high on price, higher high on the yellow line, as well as the blue line, bearish CVD divergence over here. But then more locally, if we go to the five minute, then what you can also see is a higher low on price, but a lower low on the yellow line CVD, which is interesting. So we do have a bit of bullish CVD divergences very, very locally. Let's pull the FIP over here. The golden pocket is a quite interesting target for potentially a drop and then continuation uh, towards the upside. So let's see what's going to happen. We are now at resistance again. The white target box has already been tested once, as you can see. 
So the daily naked point of control that we had over here is already taken and won't offer any resistance anymore. We do have the golden pocket, uh, but yeah, it's it's not like as strong resistance. So I can actually kind of remove this, but I just like it on the chart because this is the range that we're in at the moment. If we look at the news, we do have a news this week on Tuesday, 4 p.m. Central East European time. We have news, as you can see, but also on Wednesday, we have a red flag. So make sure to trade safe on uh, Tuesday, on Wednesday, but also on Thursday and Friday. It's quite a week, 4 p.m. on a Thursday, uh, Central East European time, high impact news, as well as on Friday to 30 p.m. So trade safe around those hours, put it on your chart, maybe with a vertical line. That's how I like to do it and then use it as an alarm uh, and and then hide it from my chart and then when the alarm goes off i know hey you know news coming so finally then the probabilities of the two scenarios that i've shown you on this micro time frame first of all the bearish one as explained this looks more like a three wave structure because it is expanding and therefore the probabilities are higher for the bearish scenario so i do like to see a little bit of a move to the upside still take the triple top that we have now over here and then see if it continues to higher prices or if it potentially drops to the downside compared to the bullish scenario because in the bullish scenario this has to be a five wave structure but it's then an expanding diagonal which is extremely rare so therefore the probabilities are higher from an Elliott Wave point of view for the bearish scenario. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use, which is the CVD. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'd like to see you at the next one. Bye bye.